The Democratic donkey presides happily over the Atlantic City boardwalk as the party's national convention pursues its more sedate way indoors. It's what has been called a one-man convention, and everyone is already on his bandwagon. Such unanimity has not been known in a national conclave of the party since the mid-30s. There isn't even a good platform fight. Most of the demonstrators, who in other conventions would have been vigorously promoting one golden name or another, relax in fun and games by the seaside. The only thing that has wise men puzzled in the opening days is who will be tapped for vice president. Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield, who arrives in the company of Interior Secretary Udall, maintains up until the very last moment that he would not take the second place on his party's presidential ticket. Senator Hubert Humphrey, who guided the civil rights bill through to its passage, pretty consistently held first place in the vice presidential sweepstakes. A fellow Minnesotan, Senator Eugene McCarthy, also was given good odds in the public, if not the presidential mind, after Mr. Johnson ruled out consideration of any member of his White House family. The first important public event of any convention is the keynote address. This year, President Johnson's nine months in office are reviewed by Senator John O. Pastore. America now moves on with majesty of these nine miracle months. Never in so short a time has so much been accomplished that is good and great for our country. These months confirm the wisdom of our fallen leader and the vision of President Kennedy lives on in the character, the capability, and the courage of his teammate of his choice. With all the sincerity in my soul, I say that God did bless America on that day four years ago in Los Angeles when John F. Kennedy said, I need you, Lyndon Johnson. And on November the 3rd, the American people will echo that call. We need you, President Lyndon B. Johnson. Biding his time and keeping his counsel to himself until he sees fit to divulge his choice, President Johnson follows his normal schedule, taking the White House pets and press for a walk. Such informal hours will become increasingly rare, for after naming his running mate and accepting his party's accolade at Atlantic City, Mr. Johnson must speed up the fight between now and November as to who will be the next four-year tenant of the stately mansion on Pennsylvania Avenue.